Hello, I'm Anastasia Pritolak, European Space Agency Postdoctoral Research Fellow in Institute Laue Langevin and European Synchrotron Radiation Facility, which are located in Grenoble, France. And today I'm going to talk about physical background of thermoelectric phenomena, which I have already introduced to you in the previous lecture. So, as we already know, uh, temperature difference creates an electric potential in a junction of two different semiconductors. Now let's try to understand in more details why this occurs. When we apply heat, the charge carriers, whether they are electrons or holes, are migrating from the hot side to the cold side, leaving opposite their immobile, uh, oppositely charged nuclei. The direction of the current flow in an electric circuit is opposite to the direction of flow of an electrons. The performance of thermoelectric material can be characterized by a so-called figure of merit, ZT, where S, sigma, and lambda are Zeebe coefficient, also called thermal power, electrical conductivity, and thermal conductivity, respectively. They are intrinsic properties of the materials and T is an absolute temperature. Uh, to go into the physics of this phenomena, we should refer to the band theory of solids. Every atom is characterized by a system of energy levels, each of which corresponds to a definite stationary state. When the atom moves from one stationary state to another, it emits or absorbs the quantum of energy, which is equal to the energy difference between stationary states. When we bring few atoms together, their orbitals overlap and the energy levels are slightly shifting due to the influence of the neighboring atoms on each other. In particular, the attraction of electrons of an atom by the nuclei of the neighboring atom. So when we uh, bring a few atoms together, they form so-called energy band ra rather than the discrete stationary states for an isolate atoms. The energy ranges with no orbitals form so-called band gap. The top of the collection of electron energy levels occupied at absolute zero temperature is called valence band. And the lowest band with uh, unoccupied states called the conduction band. As we know from the previous lecture, semiconductors are potentially good thermoelectrics. Their conduction band and valence band are not overlapping as in the case of metals, but the band gap is not so big as for insulators, so it can be overcome by an electron. Here it's also important to introduce the concept of a Fermi level. Fermi level describes the top of the collection of electron energy levels at absolute zero temperature. In other words, it's hypothetical energy level which has 50% probability to be occupied or free at the thermodynamical uh, equilibrium in any given moment. Before to go further, I should explain you about intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. Semiconductors itself are called intrinsic, where the amount of electrons and holes is about equal. That's why they have poor conductivity. When we uh, make doping of the semiconductor, it becomes an extrinsic semiconductor and their conductivity improves. Doping can be done by acceptor dopants or so-called donor dopants. When we add the donor dopant, it uh, gives an electrons to the conduction band, thus creating n-type region. And acceptor dopant can form a p-type region as it gives off holes to the valence band. In other words, it accepts an electron from the field valence band. Uh, from the Fermi-Dirac statistics, the Fermi function gives the probability that a given available electron energy state will be occupied at a given temperature. And, uh, width of the tr transaction from 1 when the state is occupied to 0 when the state is uh, not occupied is determined by the temperature. At zero temperature there are no electrons above the Fermi level. When we uh, go to the higher temperatures, a larger fraction of electrons can overcome the energy barrier. And in the high temperature the probability of 
uh, conduction band being occupied by some electrons is higher. But this should be numbered uh, by availability of the energy states in the energy range, so so-called uh, electron density of states. When we speak of uh, n-type semiconductors, we look at the states above the Fermi level. And when we speak of p-type, it's opposite. Uh, the main charge carriers for n-type semiconductors are electrons and for p-type are holes, so the sign of Zeebeck coefficient is different for this kind of materials. Now let's uh, have a look on the temperature dependence of Fermi level. When we have an intrinsic semiconductor, amount of electrons and holes is about the same. So Fermi level lies halfway between uh, conduction band and valence band. In case of extrinsic semiconductors, the situation is a bit more complicated. Uh, while at the low temperatures, uh, we have a bigger amount of one kind of charge carriers. W with heating, the donor levels of n-type semiconductors deplete of electrons and uh, Fermi level tends toward the direction of an intrinsic semiconductor, and a similar case for the p-type. Here we have an idealized energy band diagram where there is a piece of n-type semiconductor between two uh, identical metal contacts. Uh, and the EC is a conduction band, EV is a valence band, EF is a Fermi level. So when we heat up one of the contacts, for example, the contact two, the Fermi level moves, as we described in the previous slide, and the diagrams start to look like this. Here, it's important to know that the current flows uh, not directly on the bottom of the conduction band, and there are no states available there, but there is some delta in the energy. Uh, current flow is always uh, due to the difference in the Fermi levels. So when the electrons from the hot contact two overcome the energy barrier and go to the conduction band, system wants to stay in equilibrium and it creates positive voltage in a contact two, which is Q delta V, where Q is a charge and delta V is a difference in a voltage. Uh, if we make the probability of conduction band being occupied by the electrons from the contact one and contact two equal, and put two uh, equality between two Fermi functions and replace uh, EF2 and uh, by EF1 minus the Q delta V, uh, we get some value which show the proportion between temperature difference and voltage difference. This value is Zeebeck coefficient. So Zeebeck coefficient is proportional to the difference between the energy at which electron current flows and the Fermi level. Now, when we know uh, what is the reasons for the appearance of uh, thermoelectric voltage, let's try to understand how can we improve the performance of thermoelectric materials. Thermal power, electrical conductivity, and thermal conductivity all are dependent on uh, carrier concentration, and thus they are not independent on each other. We get uh, high Zeebeck coefficient values when Fermi level is uh, uh, far below the conduction band. But to get a good uh, electrical conductivity, we need the Fermi level to be in the conduction band. There is some uh, characteristic so-called uh, power factor, which gives us an optimal values uh, for Zeebeck and uh, electrical conductivity. And we get the maximum power factor when the Fermi levels uh, lies close to the edge of the conduction band, but not yet in it. Also, the important uh, factor here is the thermal conductivity. For the semiconductors, uh, the lattice part of the thermal conductivity has a stronger effect than the electron part. And the uh, lattice part of thermal conductivity is determined by the phonon mean free pass, phonon velocity, and heat capacity. In order to improve these properties, what can we do? 
For the improvement of the Dibek coefficient, we can alter the band structure by doping and co-doping and uh, try to get high density of states near the Fermi level. To improve electrical conductivity, we decrease the polarity of the covalent bonding, uh, we try to increase the mobility of charge carriers, uh, we can produce nanocomposites with uh, pieces of metals in order to improve conductivity. And for reduction of thermal conductivity, we need to intensify the scattering processes, including a phonon-phonon scattering, phonon boundary scattering, and uh, phonon impurity scattering. Thank you for your attention, and goodbye.